Kuzu Zongpo, I'm Ashok Tirwa. I'm joined by Namka Digal Galsen, an entrepreneur who is making his mark, literally. Of late, if you have noticed attractive signboards in town, that's the work of Namkai. And Namkai, thank you for agreeing to share a story. So tell us, how did you get into this line of work? Mm. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here, Ashok. It's, it's nice to be able to talk over here. Mm. Uh, give my opinion on things and blah, blah. Mm. Uh, I, well, uh, it started like uh, a year and a half ago. I think actually everything started like two years ago, over t over two years ago, when I uh, when you actually came back. When I got back, mm -hmm. no, that was like three years ago. After I got back two years ago, then that was this uh, entrepreneurship program organized uh, by Ministry, Ministry of Labor of yeah. Labor and Human Resources. Yeah. At the time, I I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and um, it seemed like a good opportunity because I wasn't really doing much. Then I thought, uh, you know, they, they train you oh. on writing proposals and everything. We'll come back to that. But uh, when you said you got back, you know, could, where were you before then? Before that, I was, I was in New York City. I was working over there uh, for two years. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was studying over there. Um, I, have a, I, I did my uh, undergrad in, in finance and business. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I graduated around um, 2009. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when I graduated, that's when that uh, the U.S. economy collapsed. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, it was around yeah, 2008. Around that time. There was no chance for me getting a job in mm -hmm. finance. So, but I got lucky, I guess. I, I tried around and uh, I managed to get a job in uh, <laughs> something somewhat related to finance is uh, visa and mastercard processing mm -hmm. uh, deals with you know the credit cards okay. credit card debit cards mm -hmm. uh, american express mm -hmm. stuff like that so over there i was doing uh, merchant accounting basically i was taking care of the people that use these cards mm -hmm. in their stores mm -hmm. in their merchant locations mm -hmm. and over there i i was i started out with just normal sales where mm -hmm. it was like uh, Cold calling, you know, mm -hmm. you make like, like, two hundred, three hundred calls a day. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of liked it because uh, it was uh, not not really related to what I was doing. But then, uh, not, not not exactly related to my studies. But then, mm, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because it's it, it sales is so interesting, mm -hmm. and it's like the fundamental comp component in pretty much anything mm -hmm. to do with business. So then around know. the rough times that that was going on in the U.S. and you had... A yeah, it was, a, it was a nice job. I mean, my company over there wasn't exactly the biggest. or It was an ISO, in an in independent sales organization. But we were in Wall Street, so mm -hmm. I got to see like big guys walking up and down. Mm -hmm. and I guess that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, my job itself wasn't that great. I started off <laughs> low, though. I got pretty good at it, and I worked wi my way up. So um, I continued. Of I continued over there for two years. Mm -hmm. Then my work for my work visa was running out, and this company wanted to sponsor me, so that you know to have mm -hmm. me continue over there. Mm -hmm. But then my lawyer kind of made some mistakes here and there. So then I was made to. If I had stayed on in the U.S., then I would have become I illegal over there. I don't want to do that. So So the plan was for me to leave the country, come back here, mm -hmm. and go back sometime later uh, that year. Once you yeah, visit. After I get my visa clarified, mm -hmm. I go back and continue my work over there. But after coming back home, then I kind of, I don't know. You didn't want to go back. I don't want to go back. And then there was this entrepreneurship course organized by, yeah. you know, no, I of saw that there's resources. a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. in Bhutan, mm -hmm. uh, untapped potential also mm -hmm. here. I mean, I think so. You saw that? I thought so. And mm -hmm. I, I still do. That's so what how useful was this entrepreneurship course for you? It was really, really good. Um, mm, I mean, I didn't expect it to be as good at as good as it was as good as it is because mm -hmm. uh, apparently they've improved now. I was like, uh, 
it it really teaches you how to write a proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different elements that come into play mm -hmm. when writing a proposal, things mm -hmm. that we don't take into consideration mm -hmm. a lot of times. So it basically it teaches you how to forecast, you know, using a straight line method over the time span of like five years. Mm -hmm. uh, their percentages increase, decrease, very um, realistic, mm -hmm. conservative, based on actual information. Um, teaches you how to, you know, take into consideration the small things also, expenses, then there's obviously your cap capital uh, costs, like, you know, machines, um, training, stuff like that. Stuff that you have to pay in the beginning, the, in the initial mm -hmm. investment. And then you have your monthly, month-to-month -month costing. Okay. But uh, cost, you have sorry. now you have a company of your own. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's funny how that came up, actually. Mm -hmm. mm. When I started this entre entrepreneurship course, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, I wasn't doing anything, so I, I figured I might as well do it. A friend of mine was doing it as well. Mm -hmm. He told me about it. and uh, It's like uh, when we did it, I think it was around 50 days. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be around 50, 60 days, like a two-month course, I think. Uh, so they teach you halfway through. They tell you you have to, you know, towards mm -hmm. the end, you have to come up with a proposal also. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you whether you want to get a loan for it uh, or not. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. entrepreneurship program, they give you up to 10 lakhs mm -hmm. with no collateral and no interest. So it's like a steel deal. Mm -hmm. Long term also, within 10 years. So mm -hmm. that was nice. So uh, towards my end of the course, I, I had to come up with a proposal. And at the spur of the moment, I, uh, I didn't really know what to do. So, uh, but then... Bhutan's got like, and I noticed this after I got back because I'd been gone for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, like so this, um, arts and crafts. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. nice. So you, the company that you have, what you call, you know, transcend artisan, uh -huh. it just happened. It's Can I say that? Yeah, yeah. Random, <laughs> random, quite randomly. I, I just gave it thought within that time span, mm -hmm. that time period. Oh uh, yeah, it was fun. And I, I didn't, think I was actually going to go through with it because I didn't think I would actually get the loan but then I did and then one thing led to another and before I knew it that's what I'm doing now so before we go on to <coughs> details and what you produce and what you have mm -hmm. so how long you have been in this business it's been a year and six months now mm -hmm. about a year and six months I think and you only talk you you said that you have made around 30 signboards mm, I think just in Thimpu or all over the country. Oh, yeah. A few went out. I t uh, mm. One went to <coughs> Sarabang, I think. I'm, mm. I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah. One went to Sarabang. Uh, uh, s uh, for some institution. I'm not too sure. I don't really know. But then um, I think it was sponsored by some, uh, by a college in Australia mm. for this institution in Sarabang. <coughs> so uh, I did that sign board just last month, I think. Just out of, out of curiosity, um, you know, how much do you, how much did you charge for that signboard? Let's see, I can't remember, oh. but I think it was around fifteen, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Yeah, but then, yeah, a lot of people are quite appalled by uh, my prices because mm. they're quite expensive. Mm. But you have Why to. Does, does it become expensive? You know? see, I can't remember, oh. but I think it was around fifteen, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Yeah, but then, yeah, a lot of people are quite appalled by uh, my prices because mm. they. Quite expensive, mm. but you Why have to. Why does it become expensive? Because it's not <coughs> that generic flex printed signboard yeah. with like tin on the side. The frames are usually made out of tin and nails. It's like very uh, crude. That's why when you poke it, it makes that funny sound. Also, goes like <coughs> crack, you know. Uh, mine is mine's expensive because the material cost is kind of expensive too. We have mm. like different mediums. We're doing it on um, aluminum composite, ACP mm -hmm. sheets. We have acrylic also. And when I when I say acrylic, I'm not talking about just that plastic glass, you know, because the, there's the cheap grade one as well, <coughs> which yellow, they turn yellow after like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, two weeks, three weeks. So this, this thing's more durable, it's stronger, it's obviously more expensive, but it's long lasting. Mm -hmm. 
and then I don't know we're venturing out into LED lights those are expensive as well and wood obviously wood okay before we go on to find out you know uh, what has been the business like and other details about what you do uh -huh. we have a song lined up for you since you told me that you're not interested you don't listen to music not much not much mm -hmm. so we have I have a song lined up for you to enjoy. So it's called Let It Go by Passenger. Well, you only need the light when it's burning low. Only miss the sun when it starts to snow. Only know you love her when you let her go. Only know you've been high when you're feeling low. Only hate the road when you're missing home. Only know you love her when you let her go. And you let her go Hello and welcome back. Uh, I'm in conversation with Namkai. Uh, he's a young entrepreneur and we played a song for him. And did you like the song, Namkai? Yeah, nice song. Yeah. I've heard it before. Okay. <laughs> so you, you do listen to music, but not mm, very often, um, right? I, I listen to music. But I uh, rarely ever remember the names okay. or the bands or the songs. So mm. Very bad with names. You <laughs> just listen to the music and, then and that's it, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is that how you do business also? No. In <laughs> business, you have to make sure you remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been your uh, business like, you know, so far? Have you made a lot of money or do you see a lot of potential? Or? Mm. No, I'm, I haven't made a lot of money. Mm. And... Uh, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm I'm getting there. It's slow and steady, um, so I'm kind of happy for that. Mm. But, and I have my rough months, mm. but everything's uh, leaning towards a more, what you may call it, upward trend. Mm. So I guess it's going okay. I'm kind of happy with it. It can be a little stressful sometimes, mm. but that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. you want to do business also. It's keeps you on your feet no? so apart from making signboards you also do other things like interior designs would you like to talk about oh yeah actually when i actually came up with the whole transcend artisan business proposal it wasn't for signboards okay. it was more for um i was trying to mechanize the way Bhutanese handicrafts are made mm -hmm. you know and wholesale it to handicraft stores i saw market a decent market over there mm -hmm. but can't you can't compete with the local artisans that too good and mm -hmm. they sell at a good price also very competitive rates mm -hmm. so no chance um so then i figured out i have to make something more unique uh then i started going into uh stuff like this it's mm -hmm. very different from how normal mm -hmm. bubs are made because oh. theirs is like way more intricate actually mm -hmm. a lot of hard work this is uh what you would call uh 2.5d so mm -hmm. it's like halfway between 2d and mm -hmm. 3d yes. so okay. See, everything's done on different gradients mm -hmm. that it's gives the illusion of... Let's talk about, you know, why you had to go to the, all these diverse things, you know? You started one thing, now you ma you do interior designs and you are making frames and, you know? If we had a market like, like you know, India or someplace mm -hmm. where the population is like huge, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can, uh, you know, one product will suffice. You mm -hmm. can specialize in that. That would actually be good because then you can specialize in just one piece that will cut costs, increase economies of scale, everything. Mm -hmm. But over here, unless you're in something really big, I feel, this is just my, my opinion, I, I'm mm -hmm. not too sure. I'm, and I'm no expert, so I don't know. But I think unless you're in something big like construction or something, you can't really, really, or tourism, mm -hmm. you can't really specialize a lot of times. I mean, you can, you could if you want, you know, Maybe if you're happy with it. But then if you, uh, like for example, my frames won't pay my bills for me. Mm -hmm. It's a combo of this and that and the signboards, everything mm -hmm. together, if I want to profit as well. Because what I heard is you charge as much as, you know, Neutron 50,000 for a signboard. I know which one you're talking about. You're talking about um, the, I think it was Dejung Honda <laughs> acrylic pieces, the, that was pretty big because uh, that was that's quite a bit because it's pretty big it's on a 30 foot pole mm -hmm. and uh, there are five five signboards and mm -hmm. each each acrylic 
acrylic sheet is around 10 millimeters thick, 12, mm -hmm. sorry, 12 millimeters thick. And we've got stainless steel knobs on the corners mm -hmm. to create aesthetic appeal. Mm -hmm. And we have um, an aluminum frame also. And it's not just a, a normal aluminum frame, mm -hmm. it's a, a ACP <coughs> sheets, they're called aluminum composite. Mm -hmm. Sheets, they're Which a is lot more durable. It's, yeah, it's glossy in nature. Yeah, you can choose the one that color you want. Apple uses. I'm talking about that kind of aluminium. Uh, mm, I, I might Apple be. That could that. be it. I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, is it stainless steel or ACP? It might be because ACP can be can have a stainless steel finish also. So it can be made to look like stainless steel. It can be made to have a gold finish. Any color, even wood. Okay. okay. So basically, what you're doing is you're importing part of your components from outside. Yeah. I and agree. adding value to that. Yeah. So even if you charge. <laughs> 53,000 or 50,000. So what would be your profit there? Is it 50% or 25%? Ooh, that's like Sorry. It's, let me just say, my margins aren't as high as a lot of people mm -hmm. might think. Um, a lot of time goes into it. And since I have like a, you know, a mm -hmm. team of three people, mm -hmm. expenses go into salary as well. Uh, uh, and it's, it's not just it's stickers, it's actual engravings. Mm -hmm. So that takes a lot of time. And the material cost is a bit also, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, the margins aren't that high. Okay. Well, and if you compare it to uh, Jaigong, uh, uh, India, just uh, nearby, uh, their signboard costs are just as much. Mm -hmm. But with me, you're, you know, encouraging domestic production mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. Of course, you a young person like you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But. Yeah. As we go in, because it all we always, I have this doubt, you know. You went to study in the U.S., you had the uh, business degree, you know? and you, you also had the experience of working in the U.S. When you came back, you had that all the opportunity in the world, you know, to be like any other person that most of us chooses to do, you know, to join a civil servants or a high-paying corporate office. Mm. Why didn't you, why you didn't want to do that? Mm, I'm not much of a nine to five kind of guy. I can't. I don't have the discipline. I would have to say. Um, in that aspect. Uh, also, another thing is, I don't know. Being an entrepreneur is fun. You get to innovate, mm -hmm. come up with something new, and it's fun to see if it succeeds. It's mm -hmm. like a game you're playing with yourself mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, like I said, I'm not 9 to 5. I find it pretty boring, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, can't do that. Mm, now, I can see why some people choose that instead. Uh, also, like, uh, you know, I think it's pretty saturated, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now I'm not saying I want to make a big difference or anything, but I'm not going to make any difference if I join that over there. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you're just going to join a pool of useless people there? Oh wow, no, no, I didn't say that. No, I did not say that. <laughs> um, just saying that uh, there are so many people already over there. and mm -hmm. uh, You always thought that you could do something different and then... I mentioned economies of scale, but then that goes into it as well. Because mm -hmm. there's already so many people over there saturated. One additional you know, input unit isn't mm -hmm. going to create more output mm -hmm. so you're going towards more of a leaning against economies of scale mm -hmm. and going towards this this economies of scale i'm not one person won't make that much of a difference i know they also one person does actually they do you know when, when you mm -hmm. look from afar i'm talking about myself only um i guess what i'm saying is i don't feel i could have really done mm -hmm. much to make okay any difference over there. Mm -hmm. Whereas over here, me doing my own thing. You're creating I can a lot of things, huh? These especially, you know, yeah. these carvings. This yeah. is beautiful. You know? you. So when you're talking about product like this, so how many people have you already employed? Or you're just a one man? But I have like a team of three people, but then I have artisans that mm -hmm. I commission a lot of work to them. Mm -hmm. And I have like over six people, mm -hmm. traditional Bhutanese painters and all. So uh, basically what my business is, is it's mixing the new with the old, you know, integrating 
traditional concepts into mm-hmm. a more con- contemporary theme, which will, which is also why I chose the name Transcend Artisan. Mm-hmm. So yeah, coming up with new stuff is basically what I. So personally, I feel that it's a success. You know, that t- you are just 27 years old, right? Yeah. And then you are already mm-hmm. already employing six people under you, and then you have these fine products to sell and display. You know. So as you were trying to do this, what are the challenges that you faced? Name, let's start with break, the first and the... And that's mm. always the hardest challenge. Mm. I first came up with these kind of products because I thought they would sell better because they're mm. cheaper mm. than uh, traditional handmade mm. ones. Mm. But so I'm, I'm, I'm dealing in with, when it comes to these at least, I'm wholesaling to handicraft stores and all. So I go up to them and I show them they're not willing to buy. Right. A lot of people. Why is that? Because it's hard to break the trend. Uh-huh. And people don't want to... Most people, this is one reason a lot of people don't go into entrepreneurs' uh, <coughs> ship also. Mm-hmm. The reason being, I feel, because um, they don't want to take the risk. Mm-hmm. No one wants to take mm-hmm. the risk. And, you know, the bigger the risks, the bigger the profit. It's true, but mm-hmm. then... The also bigger the loss. Mm-hmm. And even when it comes down to something like this, they don't want to risk buying something because they're afraid it won't sell. Mm-hmm. So they buy something that's already in demand, so, t- t- something that's already there, not necessarily mm-hmm. in demand even, because mm-hmm. they feel safer with it. Mm-hmm. Now, if and, and it's happened. Mm-hmm. After a few people started buying these, mm-hmm. then people became more open mm-hmm. to buying new products otherwise they're not willing to you have to understand that a lot of, a lot of the handicraft stores and all are used to selling the same stuff mm-hmm. the you know eight lucky signs and all which I, I do as well actually mm-hmm. but then other things as well and they've been they've been doing it for for years then mm-hmm. it's been so many years now. okay because you have been in this business for one and a half year and how many people do you think know about the products that you mm. ab- know about you or what you do you know no. Have you done enough advertisement? I haven't really advertised on BBS mm. or on um, uh, like TV, any other channels mm. or anything. But I use social media mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. to advertise. I have a page, Transcend Artisan, on Facebook, mm-hmm. and I guess uh, not that many. Not that many likes. But yeah, yeah, but <laughs> I saw a lot of cool products there. You know, I think it's. What I felt was, you know, a lot of people didn't know about your product. Yeah, yeah. My uh, but uh, but it j- like I s- said, like you said, you know, it's just been one and a half year, and you're just twenty seven year old, yeah. and uh, you have a long way to go. Yeah, I guess my strategy on this whole thing is uh, word of mouth, referral based. Mm-hmm. I feel that especially here is the best way to advertise. Mm-hmm. So as long as I do a good job. Mm-hmm word will spread and hopefully uh, I am I mean I can see uh, I'm getting a few more orders before I used to have to go door to door and I, mm-hmm. I did go door to door I got a lot of rejections also mm-hmm. but it's okay they're not saying no to you they're saying no to your products it can be uh, discouraging mm-hmm. but you know you have to you, you, you gotta keep pushing that I think mm-hmm. That's, uh, as I'm oh sorry I'm going off topic again so yeah, in the beginning it was hard for me, but now people are actually calling me and saying they want to order oh, this order many, this many. Okay. So it's working slowly. Mm-hmm. Signboards also. Mm-hmm. When I first came up with my uh, my first signboard, there were, uh, people were um, very appalled by my prices. Mm-hmm. And I was saying it's a bit too expensive. Obviously, it's compared to a signboard that's like 2000 or 5000 mm-hmm. And you suddenly you have a signboard that's like 15000 But now, after like, you know, after the first 10 orders, People don't mind paying as much because they know they're starting to get used to it. Mm-hmm. It's it's like I've broken that trend almost. Mm-hmm. Now nah, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. No, I haven't broken the trend, but I'm. I'm You're working it. on it. Okay. So hmm. are you going to settle with this? Um, you know, wood carvings, handicrafts, interior designs, mm, or you're going to expand in the future? Right now, I want to. Uh, want to. Uh, what else are you going to do? Oh, you. I have some oh, ideas. You're just happy with whatever you have, just. No, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm. This one's still like, um, you know. 
it's it's still fairly new and i do have other ideas that i want to take up soon but then i have to wait a uh, good i think realistically speaking i might have to give it another two three years mm -hmm. until this business stabilizes mm -hmm. once that once that's done mm -hmm. then maybe i could go on to doing something else maybe i could i have some other ideas but then uh, i also have further studies to look forward to mm -hmm. You want to go so for maybe stuff. right now I'm like a kid. I have no idea what, what I want to study. I know what I want to do right now, mm -hmm. as in the business. But mm -hmm. then I don't know what I want to study. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I'm too young to go into that. Maybe when I'm like 33, 35, sign between. You mm -hmm. know. So you want to leave everything and you go for studies? No, when I say stabilize, is I want the business to be able to run itself. Uh -huh. So this can pay for my tuition when I'm over there. Okay. See, long-term long thinking is what I'm trying to do here. Okay, thank you, Namko. And we wish you the very best mm -hmm. in whatever endeavor you want to take up in the future. Mm, thank you. Uh, so it's time to wind up this program. Thank you for joining us. And for those who join, joined us for this show, thank you to you all too. And do join us next week. I'm Ashok Tirwa. This is goodbye.